Hi, I'm Nicholas Geyer, and coming up next is Inside GRCC. You look inside your community's college. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This month on Inside GRCC, we'll be following some students getting a Deep Woods Biology experience. We'll see how some tooling students resurrected the past by making miniature steam engines. We'll learn about GRCC's new honors program, and we'll see how one of our anatomy instructors is using his illustration skills to help students learn. In fact, we'll start with that, Professor Paul Krieger's Guide to Human Anatomy. Hi, my name is Paul Krieger. I'm professor of biology at Grand Rapids Community College, and I've been teaching anatomy and physiology for many years. One of the core problems that students run into when they take this course, which is the study of the structure and function of the human body, is the voluminous amount of information that they have. You can see from these textbooks, which average over a thousand pages, that they're overwhelmed by the amount of detail and complexity of concepts that are covered in the course. So, I came up with a little solution. And the solution was to actually create my own book series called the Visual Analogy Guide series that consists of three books. The first that I wrote and illustrated is a Visual Analogy Guide to Human Anatomy, which covers structure of the human body. The second was a Visual Analogy Guide to Human Physiology, covering function. And then the third was a Visual Analogy Guide to Human Anatomy and Physiology, which is integration of the first two books. So let's look at a few examples to see uh, what we did to make things simpler and more memorable for students. So what is a visual analogy? A visual analogy is the theme of all these books. One good example would be the bones that you have in your vertebral column. If we were to look at one of the thoracic vertebra, you'll notice that it looks very similar to a giraffe head. Another example would be a lumbar vertebra. A lumbar vertebra, if you look at it from the side, looks a lot like a moose's head. And if you superimpose, again, the moose head on the different parts of the lumbar vertebra, they can learn the parts much better. Another good example would be one of the bones that you find inside the skull, referred to as the sphenoid bone. This bone is embedded inside the skull, and it's very difficult to see. By comparing it to a bat, it actually makes it much, much easier for students to learn the different parts. Uh, you can see that a portion of it looks very much like the wing of the bat, another portion looks like the legs of a bat, and if we visualize it as a long-eared bat, we can learn the parts much, much better. Another example we find inside the lymphatic system, there are many lymph nodes. We compare the lymph node to an oil filter. Just as an oil filter is going to filter out debris from the oil in your car, a lymph node can filter out debris from the fluid referred to as lymph. Another key feature of the book is the use of mnemonics throughout. This helps students remember some of the key anatomy and key bones. In this case, we have bones of the orbital complex in the orbit of the eye. Here's a mnemonic to remember some of the key ones there. The name of the mnemonic is Make Lily Eat Spinach Sack, and that stands for the maxilla, lacrimal bone, ethmoid bone, sphenoid, and zygomatic bones. Another unique feature is a fold-out page that shows all the bones of the skull on one side and all the bones of the skeletal system as a handy reference on the other. Another analogy would be one that's used in the physiology book. This describes the function of something that happens inside your cells. One common mechanism that occurs is a transport mechanism of how cells pump out different substances. 
a comparison can be made for that process to a sump pump. Just as a sump pump pumps water out of your basement, for example, and uses electrical energy, there's cellular energy that needs to be used to pump different substances across the plasma membrane of a cell. Another example for physiology is the conduction of a nerve impulse uh, along a nerve cell's axon. We compare that to a domino effect because you need to stimulate every little segment of that axon uh, in order for that nerve impulse to be propagated along. Also in the physiology book is an analogy to describe the pumping that occurs with the two ventricles inside the heart. Those two pumping chambers during their muscular action actually um, are similar to the wringing out of a rag. A feature that students really like about the visual analogy guides is that you can also use them as a coloring book. This gives an example of the muscles that you have in the face and how you can, students can color them in and also identify them by labeling them as well. Humor is also a component of the book. As you can see from this module that talks about measuring brain waves, uh, the thought bubble reads, my wife says I'm brain dead, I guess we'll see if she was right. There are so many visual analogies inside this book series that we decided to make a visual analogy index at the beginning of the book to showcase them all and make for an easy reference for students. In summary, we've seen just a few of the features available in the visual analogy guide series. Having used these books in my own classes with students, the feedback that we've had is very, very positive. Students enjoy learning with visual analogies. We've also received wonderful feedback from instructors all across the country. So if you're either an instructor of anatomy, physiology, or a student taking the course, I hope you'll find this book series useful. To learn more about any of our science programs, visit us online at grcc.edu or call 234-GRCC. And while we're on the subject of science, Let's take a listen to how some of Dr. Matt Douglas's biology students felt about their hands-on class at Pierce Cedar Creek Institute. We're out here at Pierce Cedar Creek Institute. It's uh, in Barry County. It's got a lot of land, different habitats that they've recreated. Well, this is a biodiversity class. We basically just go out and look at uh, insects and uh, various types of plants and animals and catch them and analyze them and try to break down certain species and stuff like that of the uh, park. It's Biology 204 and basically it, it covers the um, environment. I call it an ecological experience because it's, uh, it's giving you well-rounded understanding of the plants, trees, uh, amphibians, insects. I heard about it through the Science Center actually, there were posters up all over the place and I talked to Dr. Matt about it. I've had Dr. Matt for zoology and liked his course, so this sounded like a really, really fun time, good way to end up the summer. Well, so. we've been here since Saturday. We got here at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning and started hiking from then and we've hiked around the trails yeah. just about every day and collected samples of different things. Some people are looking for amphibians and others for reptiles, others for wildflowers. I'm looking for mushrooms. Reptiles and amphibians is what I was looking for. I was catching a lot of frogs and we were uh, measuring them and you know different types of species, the average length of them as the adult and where we were recording where we caught them and um, like time of day and everything like that. We were just out on the lake releasing butterflies and uh, somehow they all circle up and fly off in the south or some of them uh, fly straight to the shore depending on how old they are or the other things that I don't really know much about. When Dr. Matt brought them in, they were, um, some of them were still in the caterpillar stage, some of them had already formed chrysalis, and um, we just sort of waited for them to come out, and then once they did, he marked some of them, depending on what day they came out or what day they emerged, he marked them with either a red or a blue uh, marker so that we could sort of track which butterflies were doing what based on their age.
My favorite part has been the hiking trails. It's, it, there are some beautiful, uh, very captivating uh, trails out here. Um, a lot of good information that I didn't know. Uh, a lot of information on history of uh, the state and also uh, this part of the state. I think my favorite part is just going out in the 660 acres or whatever it is and catching uh, lots of types of animals like frogs and reptiles and catching snakes is probably my favorite part. You know, chasing after them through the weeds and getting your legs all cut up with briars and stuff. I think that, you know, learning like this is a really great way to learn. So if I went into education, hopefully being able to bring something like this to my students would be really nice. We've got a good broad base of people that have different um, experiences, different knowledge base, and everybody gets together and kind of share their information. So it's been really good. This is probably my favorite class I've taken so far at GRCC. And, uh, it was definitely worth the money and it's worth the four credits for just it's four credits for a weekend. Everyone here seems to know a lot about something, so you learn a lot from different people. Well, in a classroom, you learn a lot of theory behind things and you can get told something, but it's quite a bit different to actually see it in practice. Here you see a picture of something, you don't really appreciate all of its intricate uh, little detail. So it's, it's just a different perspective on things. Both biology and anatomy are marketable careers, especially with the development of the medical mile here in Grand Rapids. So feel free to check out these programs at grcc.edu. Our next story is about GRCC's newly established honors program. There are many benefits for students who choose to go beyond the basic expectations. Just ask those who have participated so far. Every little bit that further challenges students makes their success at college better. When it comes to taking the easy road or the hard road, I always choose the hard road because I learn more from it. The Honors Program is a platform for learning for academically talented and motivated students here at the college. It really provides a, a set of courses as well as learning opportunities for students to take their learning to a higher level. I like challenges. I like writing. Um, I like reading a lot. So I just I like going for a challenge. With the honors class, the numbers that we're going to have are going to be smaller than we have in a typical course. So we're going to be able to extend the experience uh, into um, some different areas that we wouldn't have been able to do with that large number previously. If you take an honors course, you're, you're knowing you're going to go in there and get more out of it than just academics. You're going to have a great teacher that wants to see you succeed. Teaching an honors class does make me a better instructor because it forces me to, uh, to challenge myself. Uh, and uh, I, I always learn uh, something from every class that I teach, but I, I find that I particularly uh, learn more from students who are pushing the envelope. A lot of gifted students are not only good um, talented academically, but they're very creative students. And so um, having that kind of opportunity allow them to show that creativity. To graduate from honors program, a student needs to complete 15 credit hours um, and also to complete some service learning experience. And that service learning might be in the context of a course, ideally, um, but they might also work with our um, service learning center to complete that. I really like that aspect. I like that not only is it more advanced for us academically, but you know we get to help the community, which is, it felt great to be, a, to be a good influence for these kids. They don't have to necessarily graduate from the program to get the benefits of it. So they may decide, I just want to take political science as honors, but not the others. Or they may want to contract an honors course for music or for art. Um, and they could do that. Every student, no matter how old they are, still can get that boredom factor. So every little bit of goal that's there helps um, the students stay focused and achieve what they're here for, um, which in the end is what you're going to do after college. Potentially what we have is the capacity to make these linkages with other honors programs at four-year baccalaureate programs. 
The more things that I can list positively on my transcript that I've done with my time at CC, the better my chances are. And I already hold myself to a really high standard um, academically, so um, it just it seemed like a natural fit for me to be a part of the honors program. If you're interested in the honors program, you can find out more at grcc.edu or by calling 234-GRCC. And now it's time for a timeless story, one that bridges generations and shows just how deeply GRCC is rooted in this community. This is a story of how the work of GRCC alumni has been used to train current GRCC students to create something beautiful, miniature steam engines. worked at Steelcase for 24 years and due to outsourcing and downsizing I had a opportunity to take the early buyout and along with that I had a chance to uh, take schooling at GRCC and it was in the CNC machinist tech class and I thought you know, if you're going to lose your job, you might as well look to the future and try to find something better. First, I came here, I work at Bay. I just know I run a CNC, but only operator. You know, just brushing the burden, that's all I do. So, and clean the park, so that's it. So, uh, I never know about anything what inside a CNC, you know. I never know about how the leg works. Elmer Verberg actually wrote a very nice book full of uh, small steam engine designs and the book is now out of print and um, evidently very expensive for a new copy up to three thousand dollars but there happened to be a copy in the uh, library so we uh, we picked up a copy of the book and we took some uh, prints out of that and I've been using that to kind of give them some uh, projects to work on but the thing I liked about it was the, the book is full of blueprints and very detailed and very good prints so my more advanced students I can pretty much give them the blueprints and uh, with what they've learned they take off and uh, build these things primarily just using all the equipment in here and using their, uh, their talents and their skills to interpret the prints and figure out how to make these things. I was a student here in the electronics technology program. My father went here back when it was Davis Tech. Someone would send him a picture, uh, a rough sketch, any number of things, and he would work on some of these engines that we see here today. Uh, they're pretty much his adaptation of the pictures uh, engineered in such a way that the amateur or the model machinist can go out and buy bar stock, flat stock, rods and put this together without needing castings. You see it, you see the fine workmanship, you see the effort someone put in and it operates. I think that's the fun part of it. And for the students I think it's starting with a drawing, an idea and seeing it to completion a fine piece of work and that it's running. I build something myself, you know, so it means I make it myself, so it's a, it's a little bit difficult, but I take a lot of pressure on it. To me, it's uh, very pleasing because I'm seeing all his work, his efforts to make something that people could use, enjoy, and learn from. 
being used exactly the way he would want it. The learning involved as far as reading blueprints, developing the um, plans to make a part, what they always refer to as kind of those higher level, those critical thinking skills. But how do we interpret a blueprint, select the materials, do the setup, and uh, run the machine tools to make those parts? And I think those skills are never going to go out of date or become obsolete and that type of thing. So I think there's a, you know, a very high level of education that's involved in learning how to do this type of stuff. And also I think there's also a very high level of personal satisfaction on the part of those students that when they uh, come in here with, say, very limited skills in machining and be able to walk out of this program with the skills to make these very highly complex uh, engines, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for them. They have done a beautiful job. They are beautiful engines. They all run. It, workmanship on them is beautiful. Uh, I'm very pleased to see the, the quality of work these two fellows have put into it. I would say they're showpieces. And the fact they all work, even that uh, little uh, pump, will pump water. It's, it's beautiful. And what's interesting is uh, Elmer Berberg, when he wrote this book, you read the directions and he talks about using files and saws and that type of thing. And of course now in here with the uh, computer controlled equipment is they're really raising the, uh, the level of technology up a lot, but really accomplishing the same tasks that somebody else used to do back in the old days with just a lot of hand tools. And the things that his father did is just amazing with, with what he had in the, in, you know, in the day that he did it. It's just, just unbelievable. If the talent, it's almost like he's a genius to be able to accomplish that with the tools and the equipment that he had. Well, it was really, uh, it's kind of fun to, to have the son come in here and see a lot of the same engine that his father created many years ago with uh, using, of course, the modern technology and, of course, a, a new group of students coming up and learning those skills that uh, they needed to make these. When he come back to see all the things, you know, from his father, and I can make it, you know, like it's happened again, so. I hope it makes him feel good to see the things that, that we're doing that his, that his father made. And it's something that's, you know, passing on through the generations. I have seen, I think, all of the engines over the years in various stages of completion. It's very pleasing to me to see it. Uh, it brings back a lot of memories of my father working with it. And uh, he would be, be very proud of these kids. You can learn more about our tooling program by visiting grcc.edu or by calling 234-GRCC. That's our show for this month. Remember, you can watch much of our programming line either by visiting grcc.tv or by going to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash grcc. Thanks for watching.